Hi, my name's Julie Faithan Balzer, and I've been designing stencils for the Crafters Workshop since 2011. So I put together a series of videos sharing some of my very favorite stencil techniques. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope you'll check out my stencils. You can always find more tips and tricks here on my YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe. And also on my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. And you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter as well. It's free. It hits your inbox every Friday with a dose of inspiration and a lot of information about the online classes that I teach. So I often have things that didn't quite work out or pieces of paper that no longer work for me, you know, things that were used sort of as an under paper or scratch paper. And using a gelatin plate and a stencil. In this case, I'm using this beautiful new stencil, which is called Secret Garden. Um, and it's a great way to transform these papers. So I'm gonna start off with this little sort of half piece of paper. It is smaller than my gelatin plate, and that's totally fine. So I'm gonna put some white paint out onto my plate and knowing how much paint to put out is really important. In my online class, A Year of Gelatin Printing, I take you through all of those kind of basic steps along with all the fancy techniques in terms of also how to eliminate the lines. For instance, you're pressing too hard with your brayer when you get all those lines. You know, which brayers work best, all that kind of stuff. Now, I like to push a little bit hard and get some lines because I like to have that kind of dimension, but if you don't, you certainly don't have to. And I just clean my brayer off onto my paper underneath. Now I'm going to take the stencil and place it down onto my gelatin plate. You can see my stencil is larger than my plate. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take my piece of paper and place it down. Now to protect my fingers, I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper and just place it over it. And I'm going to rub, 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 focusing obviously in the area where the paper is and I used white because it was highly contrasting to what was already there on the paper which was blue and black ta-da what a difference that stencil makes it just brightened this paper up and it makes it a lot happier and goes right over that black and blue so now I still have penny plenty of paint here so I can just put it onto my scrap paper to kind of clean up and in case you've never used stencils before with a gelatin plate, here you can see how I have the outline that was under the stencil left. I have just a piece of scrap paper here, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that print as well. And look how great that opposite print looks just on this scrap piece of paper. Some people like to clean their plates between paint applications. I'm not necessarily a cleaner. It's not something that I do a lot. But now I wanna show you with a contrasting color, we just used white. Why don't we use black and see how that looks? This time the paper is big enough that I don't have to put another piece of paper on top. So I'm just gonna rub the back of this piece of scratch paper. This is a piece of copy paper that has some spray ink on it. And now it is a beautifully stenciled piece of paper, totally and completely transformed from what it was. So let me just pick up the excess paint. And now underneath, you can see, again, there's a print that I can pick up onto a piece of scrap paper. There is my beautiful cleanup print. Looks awesome. Okay, so now... I'm gonna to try to transform this, and the hardest part is picking the right color. I want something that's opaque and something that's gonna be a contrast with what's here. So I don't wanna use black, because I have this big black stripe here. I could use white, that might not be a bad choice. I think I might go with teal mixed with white, so kind of a light blue. So I'm gonna put out some teal and some white and I'm gonna go ahead and roll those out on my plate. You'll notice that I just use my brayer to mix the colors because I like it when it's not totally even color. There, You can, of course, pre-mix your paint so that you get that totally even color. You'll also notice that I get fewer lines now that I'm using a bigger brayer. So sometimes you wanna size up your brayer for your plate. Let me just clean off the excess here. And again, I'll place the stencil down onto the plate. I'm gonna let this design be centered this time. 
And now my piece of paper is slightly bigger than my plate, so I'm gonna have some edges that don't get covered and that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and rub. So we've used a wide variety of papers here so far. I'm currently using cardstock. We've used copy paper, deli paper. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I even threw on there, but you can really use an amazing number of surfaces with your gelatin plate. Oh, wow. That looks so, well, it looks so much better. It looks so good. It really, that design, just covers everything up and by picking that contrasting color, it kind of pulls it over. So now this piece can uh, have some new life. I can go back in, add some more things to it, change it up. And of course there's plenty here to clean up onto some scrap paper. See how much ink, not ink, but see how much paint is really left on that plate. And you even can see some of the black paint coming through on the edge that's still on the stencil. So now I'm going to print onto some book pages. That looks fantastic. I love how I ended up picking up a lot of the black off the bottom of the stencil where it was dirty. So this is one of the reasons I don't clean my supplies because I like all of this dirty transfer. So I hope that you will give this a try sort of rescuing, so to speak, some things that maybe weren't that great with a little bit of overall stenciling. And then of course you get a ton of different collage papers that you can also use. I have a big pile over here on the floor if I can just start to grab some of them.